Hi everyone, I'm Dana Ponsky, your guide to college, and welcome to Being Jewish in College and our new video series, Kibbutz in 10 Minutes. Today, you will get about 10 minutes of very valuable information from Rowe Shoshan, Executive Director of the Hillel at the University of Georgia. Thank you so much for joining us today. To kick off, we're just gonna get started right now. To kick off, can you give us the name of the Jewish Center on campus? Yes, so first of all, thank you for having me, and I hope this video will be helpful for many of the students as they seek to find their next uh, college. Um, so we are called Hillel at UGA. We are part of a, um, a master system uh, called Hillels of Georgia. And so we are under that umbrella and we are operating in various campuses uh, throughout the state of Georgia. And the one that we have, Hillel at UGA, is probably one of the biggest ones uh, that we have. Cool. So University of Georgia is quite a big school in general, but how many Jewish students would you say are on campus on average? And is there a breakdown in the number of students who might identify as secular, reform, conservative, orthodox, reconstructionist, humanistic, any kind of identity that a student might have within the, within the realm of Judaism? Yeah, so unfortunately the university doesn't share uh, the exact number of student, uh, Jewish students. But we do have our ways to find out. And um, we are estimating about a thousand Jewish students, give or take, uh, that are currently in the University of Georgia. This is out of 35,000 undergrad students. So we're not a big part of the, the community, but we are a very strong part of the community. Um, in our database, in our system, we have about 750 students that we already identified and we are working with and we are in contact and engaging with. Um, and we're Estimating there's about 200 more that we, you know, they're still out there. Um, I think that the biggest thing when you look at uh, the numbers is that the majority of the students um, do come from the Atlanta area. Uh, there are very generous scholarships that the state of Georgia is offering to students on the form of the Zell and the Hope scholarships, which drives a lot of the students to come and study at UGA. But we do see an increase of students coming from out of state places like the Northeast, um, the South uh, Florida area, um, Texas, Michigan, Arizona, uh, definitely been seeing a lot of those coming in in the last few months to take visits and stuff. As far as the, um, um, the split between Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, again, we don't ask these kind of questions for the students, but we could, I could probably estimate that 60, 65% are Reform, um, about, I would say, 25 to 30 are conservative, and there is a very, very small amount that are considered uh, orthodox. Um, main reasons are because it's kind of, it's pretty hard to be an orthodox student in, in, in UGA. Um, you know, the number of kosher places that you can eat in are pretty much limited to Chabad and Hillel. Um, but the good thing is that Atlanta is pretty much close by, so people that do keep kosher can find uh, the outlet for that. Uh, but uh, I would say the majority of the students are from the reform movement. Okay, so uh, that's actually one of the next questions I had was, are there kosher food options available to students on campus? And if so, what are they and where can the students access that? Yeah, so the university itself, the dining options in the University of Georgia does not offer kosher options. So um, there are uh, a couple of uh, supermarkets around town, around Athens, which by the way is a great uh, town if you haven't been and you should definitely visit, um, Trader Joe, Trader Joe's and some uh, a couple of Kroger's. Um, if you want to get a, a kosher meal, Chabad, um, that we work very close with and they do a fantastic job, uh, and Hillel will be the place to do that. We uh, cook every Friday a huge Shabbat meal for all the students. So our, our Shabbat dinners are weekly and we usually range between 80 to 100 people. So if you think about the numbers that we talked about before, you know, you get to see a lot of the Jewish community in one place on a Friday night, which is really nice. Um, in addition, you know, the students really, they cook the meals themselves with our, with our Hillel. So they would come around two, three o'clock, they start making the food at five o'clock, the Shabbat crew, the challah crew comes in, they start preparing the challahs, six o'clock we do services, and then we sit down for dinner at seven. We always have leftovers, so if you really want to get a, you know, another kosher <laughs> meal in, uh, you can do that. And we actually worked out that Chabad is starting their dinner at eight o'clock. So you could go and, and you know, double dip in that, in that sense and go to Hillel at seven and then get another kosher meal at eight o'clock uh, with Chabad, which is five minute walk from us. Perfect. So shifting in a little bit, um, can you tell me, are there any, can students major in Jewish studies or minor in Jewish studies? And are there Hebrew language courses um, that are available to students um, at, through the university? 
Yeah, um, so there is a, there is an option as of last year. I'm not sure what they're going to do next year because I heard that the, one of the professors are leaving. It's not confirmed, but uh, there was an option to take Hebrew as uh, as a course. Um, and there is a big department, um, the religious department, the Judaism obviously is one of them. It's being led by uh, Professor Richard Friedman, uh, a world known scholar. Um, so you have that option. At, at EGA for sure. Um, I hope they will continue to do that. I, I heard some rumors, like I said, that they might be discontinued to do the Hebrew classes, but um, that's more of a you know wishful thinking that they will continue. So we'll see. Okay. Um, in terms of the political or social justice climate on campus, how how is the university handling such topics, if at all, um, regarding BDS, anti-Semitism, um, anti-Israel, anti-Zionist, um, you know, thoughts? How does the university handle that? Yeah, so uh, it's a very good question, and I know it's something that keeps a lot of uh, students um, up at night, <laughs> if you can say that. And I would uh, split my answer into two. Uh, there's the part that we do as Hillel. Um, to fight BDS and anti-Israel sentiment on campus. Um, that is being done uh, in a couple of ways. One, through our uh, student board committee. So our traditional board, student board, is very different than other Hillel's where you usually have a president, vice president, and so on and so forth. We actually took our student board and we created committees. And each committee works with a staff liaison and actually gets to do uh, programming that fits the narrative that they want to be involved in. Uh, we have five committees, Jewish life, social, Greek, um, Israel, and social justice, which is the, the committee that we created this year based on all current events. Um, they've done a fantastic job in creating programs for students, by students, that uh, raise awareness for racial justice. We had a racial justice speaker series. Uh, we've done tikkun olam programs throughout campus. Um, so that's something that our board is actively doing um, throughout the year and also working with other Hillels. Uh, we did have a couple of, I would say, anti-Semitic incidents in the past where the university, uh, thanks to the good relationship that I have with uh, President uh, Jerry Moorhead and other administrations, really jumped on it from the beginning and worked with us side by side to help fight that. Um, I can tell you that um, we've had, uh, I think it was two years ago, maybe uh, some swastikas painted on some doors of Jewish students. And the university from the first second stepped in, um, started an investigation that involved the Athens police and the um, campus police. Uh, within a few days, uh, they found the person that did that um, and uh, they brought him to justice. Um, and the president of the university itself as an act of support of our community came to Shabbat dinner at Hillel to address the students and really speak to them about why you know, this is an important part of um, their ideology to keep people safe. Um, only a few months ago, the Student Government Association passed uh, unanimously a resolution to, the, to adopt the IRA, um, the International Holocaust Members Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. So now we actually have a definition of what anti-Semitism is in student government. It will be a lot easier to fight that. And in the form of BDS, there is a group uh, that uh, is called Students for Justice of Palestine that is active at UGA. Not very much active, but they still active to some degree. Uh, what we do in that aspect is that we are part of the Maccabee Task Force. Um, and this program basically helps us through funding that they give Hillel to fight BDS and anti-Israel sentiment on campus. The best thing that we were able to do is to produce a trip to Israel that took 25 students, that 20 of them are not Jewish, and 20 of these students are student leaders. This could be students from Young Democrats, uh, College of Republicans, different ethnic groups, the president of the Student Government Association, and the university helped us find these individuals uh, and, and those leaders within the different uh, groups. I staff both trips that we've done to Israel, and that really changed the narrative about how they see Israel, how they see um, Judaism and also their relationship to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This trip is takes us, uh, you know, to the Palestinian territory. It takes you to uh, understand the narratives of Israel as a democracy, minorities in Israel. Uh, when they come back, they have a much better understanding of uh, what Israel is all about, and they can have a better understanding of why uh, BDS is not the way to go. Um, very, we, we were actually very lucky that the two students that passed the resolution. Uh, that I just mentioned actually went on this trip and were inspired by this trip. So in that end, like I said, we, we work on different angles. We have our committees, we have the relationship with the university, 
And we also have um, the funding of the Maccabee Task Force that helps us uh, fight these uh, sentiments and also create uh, educational programs to, for students to better understand the narrative of Israel. Wonderful, thank you so much. So uh, shifting again, what is the most popular and well-attended program that uh, Hillel puts on in any given year? Wow, uh, it's, I would say it's probably a tie between our Greek Shabbat and Israel Fest. Okay. Um, Greek Shabbat is a program that we started a couple of years ago where we wanted to get all the students from all, all the Jewish students from all the Greek houses uh, to celebrate together uh, and put the rivalry aside. Um, <laughs> two years ago, last year we couldn't do it because of COVID. Uh, we had to actually rent a space in Athens because the numbers were starting to get too big. And like I said, in our house, we can probably fit 80, 100 to 100 uh, every Friday. But we had all oh, close to 250 students that came. It was incredible. It was like like a Jewish gala. Uh, <laughs> and everybody joined in, all the sororities, fraternities, they all came together to help plan the event. It was beautiful. It was just like a wonderful opportunity for everybody to come together. Um, we will obviously continue that as we'll move forward. And I would say the second thing is uh, Israel Fest. Israel Fest is our, our version of Israel Independence Day that usually happens uh, on campus. Um, and then we have all the pro-Israel groups that we have uh, kind of having like different booths. Uh, we bring a DJ, we bring Israeli food. Uh, there's uh, artists for Israel that come in and they paint thick, uh, they paint uh, t-shirts with graffiti. Um, really, really a, a well put together event that uh, happens in the middle of campus. We sometimes bring a camel because it's really cool and people like to take pictures of it. Uh, not that I think that Israel should be identified as a place that you ride a camel. Uh, I certainly never rode one, but uh, you know, it adds to the Middle Eastern feel. But uh, it's, a, it's an amazing event that uh, everybody kind of walks through and gets to see different things about Israel. That usually gets, you know, hundreds of people, four or 500 people at least. We did it this year in a more, in a smaller COVID style um, event and we had about 150 which is really good considering uh, everything that we had to go through. Yeah. So I would say um, Greek Shabbat that really puts an emphasis on Judaism and Israel Fest puts an emphasis of the love to Israel and, and our Zionist approach towards it. Uh, I would say those are probably the two well attended and most liked events uh, okay. as well with the students. Okay. And our last final question is, what do you love the most about leading the Jewish community at University of Georgia? Wow, that's a really good one. Um, to me, it's always been the one-on-one -on -one connections, the, the interactions. When I started my job three years ago, um, I told every person that I met with, every parent, that I have three eyes that I follow. Uh, the first eye is interaction. Um, so my, my goal was to really take, create as many interactions between Jewish students to one another. Um, the second eye was identity. I think when you come to college, developing a Jewish identity is something that is very important because either you had one coming in and now you're looking at things a little different or you didn't have one. And then it's up to us. Uh, we have a responsibility to help you shape one when you leave. And the third eye is Israel. So every time I, uh, you know, when I meet with students, to me, the best part is the one-on-ones, is the ability to sit down, be a mentor, um, help wherever I can with a good advice, you know, if somebody's spilling, say, bring them some matzo ball soup. But the, at the end of the day, I think what this year has taught us is that what people are looking for more than anything is just uh, uh, an interaction, a human interaction. And I think that's where Hillel can really step in and be, um, you know, the that, that organization that they seek to, do, to get that from. Um, we're very lucky that we have amazing students that not only care about being Jewish in Israel, but they also care about each other. And the fact that our board, um, like I said, was able to be uh, formed the way it did, and we have close to 40 students on our board, that really shows how much people care. And that shows that they want to be involved. And what I really love is just the ability to meet young people in a very young age, you know, when they're 18, 19, 20, and uh, help them pick how their experience is going to look like in college from a Jewish lens, but also staying in touch with them. Uh, I have some seniors that I've stayed in touch with and we're still talking and they still wanna consult about different things. Uh, this job never leaves you in a way. Yeah. You're an educator, but you're also uh, in a very unique position where you can help people uh, in, in, in a very critical time of their life. So to me, it's always been the one-on-one -on -one coffees and interactions that I really love about our job. Wonderful. 
Well, Roe, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. I think that a lot of families and students will get a lot about learning about uh, the Hillel at the University of Georgia, University of Georgia in general. So thank you so much for participating and we really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for watching. It's been my pleasure. Thanks All guys. Right. Bye-bye.